Well, as I mentioned earlier in the program, of course, Peter Dutton is the new leader of the Liberal Party after a party room vote yesterday with former Environment Minister Susan Lee elected as deputy. Mr Dutton, of course, had been all but confirmed as the next opposition leader as he was the only person really put his hand up for the job. He replaces Scott Morrison, who resigned from the position after the coalition's election defeat, of course. Uh, now, both Peter Dutton and Susan Lee were elected unopposed for their positions. And yesterday, Mr Dutton reiterated the Liberal Party under his leadership would not be Labor light and would be true to its values. He said yesterday our policies will be squarely aimed at the forgotten Australians in the suburbs across Australia. He said he wants our country to support aspiration and award hard work, take proper care of those Australians who short term or long term can't take care of themselves. Now, he did say his shadow front bench would be unveiled later this week. Now, interestingly, Peter Dutton was asked whether he would work with the Labor government on establishing an Indigenous voice to Parliament, given he walked out on Kevin Rudd's apology to the stolen generations back in 2008. Remember that? Now, Mr Dutton said he made a mistake when he boycotted the apology. He said, largely, that was because of my own background and experience. I worked in Townsville. I remember going to many domestic violence incidents, uh, particularly in Indigenous communities. He said, at the time, I believe the apology should be given when the problems were resolved and the problems weren't resolved. Now, Miss Lee said it was a great honour to serve as deputy, and that she believed Mr Dutton was absolutely the best person to lead the party. She said, as well as being a strong advocate for regional and rural Australia, she would continue to be a strong voice for women. We know that we don't receive the support of all women. At, uh, we didn't receive, rather, the support of all women at the last election. Well, she's right about that. And she said, my message to the women of Australia is, we hear you. Well, I'm glad you do, Susan, because I don't think the former Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, heard a damn thing. She goes on to say, um, we know that we didn't receive the support of all women at the last election, and we are listening now. Well, better late than never. We're talking, Miss Lee said, and we're determined to earn back your trust and your faith. Now, she was asked if the Liberal Party was listening to the feedback from the election why both Conservative parties had again elected men as leaders. Ooh. Well, Miss Lee said, I mean, you've got to think about it. The Nationals dumped Barnaby Joyce for David Littleproud. Uh, Perrin Davey, of course, is the party's new deputy leader. Now, Miss Lee said there were many women in leadership positions across the parliament. Look, that is true, but they're not in the key leadership positions. Do you think it's time or, I don't know, maybe not for the Liberals. Would Susan Lee have made a better choice, given what happened in the last election, would Susan Lee have made a better choice for the Liberals to elect as leader? Um, I suspect that Peter Dutton's ego probably wouldn't have allowed that. Anyway, she goes on to say she's comfortable with the leadership of our party and very comfortable with Peter Dutton in the role. Now... Peter Dutton is undergoing a uh, change, if you like, in his personality. I mean, he's a hardline conservative. We know that within the Liberal Party, a hard ass, hard on border uh, control, hard in a number of areas. And look, that's probably to his credit, to some extent, having been a former serving police officer. Anyway, Mr. Dutton has sought to recast his image ahead of the vote today and becoming opposition leader. It's going to be a tough sell for him, as I said on the program earlier this week or last week. Anyway, he said he wanted the people to see his entire person, whatever that means. He's arguing his image up to now was partly shaped by the portfolios he'd had, such as home affairs and defence. The opposition leader said as Home Affairs Minister, he cancelled visas of just over 6,000 criminals, including people found guilty of sexual offences, 
against women and children. It's pretty hard to break into a smile when you're making that announcement, to show a softer side or a different side to your character. Well, that's true. Uh, in fairness, that is true. He went on to say, all I would say is I'm not going to change, but I want people to see the entire person that I am and reserve and make their own judgment, judgments when they meet me. All right, well, the 51-year-old hardhead has been at the centre of his fair share of controversies during um, his, what is it, two decades or so in Parliament. Uh, we remember back to 2015 when he was caught on a hot mic, a boom mic, above his head making a joke about water lapping at the door of Pacific Island nations because of climate change. The next year, he made inflammatory remarks about refugees' literacy levels. He was... The only, he was also the only opposition frontbencher back in 2008 to boycott then Prime Minister Kevin Rudd's apology to the stolen generations. He personally voted no and encouraged people to do the same on same-sex marriage back in 2017. But ultimately, he voted in favour of same-sex marriage in Parliament after majority support for it was made clear by the post.